it would be good to see the trick of how to deal with even powers of both the sine and the cosine, although learning this isn't necessarily the highest priority. The trick here, what I'll call step one, is to reduce the power. And just as I did in the previous set of notes and the previous video, let's look at this in terms of a concrete example. When I say that we're going to reduce the powers, we're going to use the following two trigonometric identities, which you may very well not have memorized, but the sine squared of theta is one minus the cosine of two theta over two. And the cosine squared of theta is one plus the cosine of two theta over two. And just as in the previous case where you rewrote something as a square raised to a power, if our powers are both even, they can both be rewritten as a square to a power. Well, in this example, the sign's already a square, we leave it alone, but the cosine to the fourth is the cosine squared squared. And then we take these identities and we plug them in. Our next step is to multiply everything out. So first we square this, then we multiply the result of that squaring by this. I am going to do that off camera. And now we have a combination of integrals we can take without a lot of hassle and powers of the sine or the cosine. In this case, powers both of the cosine. This is an odd power of the cosine. We should be able to deal with it using the techniques of the previous video. This is an even power of the cosine. We'll hit it again with the techniques of this video. So let's just go through these one by one. We need eventually to integrate all of these. 
when we integrate to one, we'll get theta, no problem. When we integrate to the cosine of a two theta, we'll get one half the sine of two theta. When we integrate the cosine squared of two theta, we'll be subtracting this, but I'm just looking at this right now. We'll hit it with our reduction of power identity a second time. So theta turns to two theta. So when we apply this identity to two theta, that's going to turn to four theta. And this is an integral we can take. Pull that two out. The antiderivative of one is theta. The antiderivative of the cosine of four theta is one fourth the sine of four theta. What about when we integrate to this? Well, fundamentally, this is an odd power of the cosine. We can do a quick U substitution. U equals two theta. D u equals two d theta. To make this one half the integral of the cosine cubed of u d u. And I Guess finishing on this sheet of paper was a pipe dream. This is an odd power. We'll hit it with the technique of the previous video. So we'll pull a cosine out. This is already written as a cosine squared. We don't need to rewrite it. That is to say, we don't need to rewrite it as a square raised to a power. It's already a square raised to the first power. We do have to rewrite it using the Pythagorean identity. One half the integral of one minus the sine squared of u times the cosine of u du. We're already using u, so we can call our substitution variable v. v equals the sine of u, dv 
is the cosine of u du. This is one half the integral of one minus v squared dv. So one half times v minus one third v cubed. Let's see, v is the sine of u. So the sine of u minus one third, the sine of u cubed. But u is itself a dummy variable. It's two theta. One half the sine of two theta minus one third the sine cubed of two theta. So going back to where we were at, we have now computed all four of these integrals. And aside from putting them together, we have finished our problem. When we put these things together, we wind up with one sixteenth times theta minus one fourth times the sine of four theta. No, sorry, I've changed my mind. I mean, this is correct, but let's show this in a little more detail. We've got one eighth times this integral. And plugging in our work, well, we could do this in our head, this one, gives us a theta. The cosine of two theta gives us one half the sine of two theta. Minus the cosine squared of theta. gives us this, one half theta plus one fourth, the sine of four theta, and the cosine cubed of two theta, we just did that and wound up with this. Let me distribute everything except for this one eighth, which I'm just going to let sit there. Some cancellation occurs. Um, most notably, we have a one half sine two theta 
and a negative one half sine two theta. So those completely eliminate each other. We also have a theta and a minus one half theta. So that gives us one half theta. So here's our final solution. In the notes, it's written a little bit differently. We pull out a one half, so we have a one sixteenth in front, but this is the same solution you see in the notes, just written a little differently.